Hey everybody, my name is Welland and we're checking out Whispers of a Machine today. So I'm playing a lot of other stuff right now and I almost certainly don't have enough time to really dig into something else deeply, but I thought I would at least share the beginning of Whispers of a Machine with you because I think the premise seems pretty interesting and maybe you'd be interested in checking this game out yourself. This is a sci-fi Nordic noir adventure game that takes place in a near future where artificial intelligence is forbidden. We play as a detective who has cybernetic augmentations and we seem to stumble upon something that'll let us bring back this forbidden technology. And the one really unique thing about Whispers of a Machine is that there are multiple solutions to the same puzzles depending on the choices you make in the game, which will unlock different types of augmentations, different abilities, different kinds of um, things to see, I would assume. Which is not something that you commonly see in other traditional adventure games, I guess. Oh, by the way, if we look in the options menu here, there is an option to turn nudity on and off. Just so you know, I do have nudity off right now because that would make editing a lot easier. But it's kind of cool that they have this option. Hmm. This game uses automatic saves. Decisions are permanent, so make your choices carefully. This game also contains occasional fast flashing images, which may cause discomfort and trigger seizures if you have photosensitive epilepsy. Viewer discretion is advised. Permanent choices. So, what's with the gloomy look? Left someone dear behind? Uh, yeah. You could say that. Been there. So, Nord Sunday, you better buckle up. We've got some nasty weather coming in. I heard. Sadly, caring about storms is a luxury people in my line of work are rarely afforded. Oh, and what kind of work is that? Special agent. Violent crimes. Central Bureau. Well, shit. That's us. Nordson Workshop Hall, 10 a.m. You there. This is a restricted crime scene. Yeah, I'm- I belong here. Hmm. Hi there, I'm Vera. Your superior briefed you about me, right? Your agent England? Well, I'm Gabriel. So, Gabriel. Murders are rare in places like this, right? Uh, you can say that again. Yeah, I get it. Mind telling me about the attack? The victim is Carl Oscarson, age 33. Stabbed to death by an unknown assailant. He worked here as a carpenter and was found early this morning by a co-worker who's sitting over there by the window. Got it. Tutorial. Vera's personality. Vera can advance three distinct personality traits. Empathetic, assertive, analytical. Your choices will influence all three, affecting the course of the story and the tools at your disposal. Advancing one personality trait always weakens the other two, so make your choices carefully. So you can't be empathetic and assertive? Or empathetic and analytical? Well, I guess you can be a little bit of both, but if you want to be fully analytical, then you can't be empathetic. Alright, I don't really have a particular leaning, but I assume that my choices would probably lean towards empathetic or analytical. Sorry about the state of the crime scene. We're not used to this sort of thing. I gotta tell you that this isn't up to par. That sounds pretty assertive. But they don't tell you, so that's cool. You just naturally pick the one that you like the most and it'll tell you. Are you assertive or are you empathetic or analytical? Evidently, it sounds kind of condescending too. Oh, don't worry about it, Constable. This looks, uh, quite typical. Don't hold back on my account, ma'am. I can handle criticism. Good to hear. Now, give me a second while I examine the body. Sure, I'll be here. This choice has amplified Vera's empathetic side. There will be many instances like this, strengthening one personality trait at the expense of the other two. So, is this where you use your X-ray vision? My what? 
Come on, you have to be aware of the rumors. How agents like you are supposed to be equipped with some kind of advanced cybernetics? I'd love to talk about that, Gabriel, but I'd be breaking the rules. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Secret augmentations, huh? Left mouse to walk and interact, spacebar or tab to display interactables in the room. Click on an inventory item to examine it or drag and drop it to combine it with other things. Cool. So right now, I got a handgun. My service pistol. It fires conventional projectiles using magnetic propulsion. It's loaded with 600 rounds of compressed alloy ammunition. The battery is the limiting factor, lasting for about 80 shots in quick succession. Battery? My notebook contains two sections, notes and people. Yes, you can show inventory items during dialogue by simply clicking on them. The reason I'm here. I need to gather as much evidence as possible and try to get some kind of lead on the killer. You got it, lady. My picture of Alex. <sighs> I miss him. Oh, we don't know who Alex is just yet. We have a forensic scanner, biometric analyzer, muscle boost. Oh. So if I hold tab. Ah, that's great, because then sometimes when you play point-and-click games, you just miss things because it's so small, right? But if you do this, you won't miss it. Well, let's start with a corpse. All right, we've got multiple knife-sized stab wounds to the chest. I don't see a murder weapon, so I take it none was found at the scene? That's right. All knives and sharp tools in the building have been accounted for, too. It looks like the victim was attacked directly from the front. I don't see any major defense wounds, so this was either a surprise attack or the victim knew the perpetrator. What about any potential suspects, Constable? Did Carl have enemies? None as far as we know. He seemed to be well-liked among the guys here, but the man who found him might know more. There was a photo in his chest pocket. Augmentations? In the lower right corner, you have augmentations. Experiment with them to see how they work. It's a bloody photograph of Carl and a young woman, taken fairly recently by the look of it. He's holding hands with the woman, but I can't discern her face. Too much damage to the photo. She's wearing a brass necklace. Could be relevant. No, oh, maybe we can, like, enhance the photo. <laughs> Biometric analyzer? Will automatically lock onto nearby targets. You can also click on the lock icon on your target to force the analyzer to stay connected. Okay, I thought that we could use this on the painting, no, the photo, but um, it's on the person. He's relaxed. We might want to use it on this guy. Drag and drop the scanner to move it around. Anomalies viewed through the lens will light up in a bright color. Drag and... what about the picture? Hmm. The scanner is now in smart scan mode where forensic anomalies are detected from the surrounding environment. So if I drag it around... Ah! It's analyzing the blood. Deceased male, aged 32. It's pretty close to the real one. It's 33, right? Collected scanner samples will be added to your data vault and can be attached to the scanner for a targeted search. Unlike the smart scan, samples will allow detection in areas with a lot of contamination, such as picking up specific fingerprints in a room full of prints. Keep in mind that you won't find any new samples this way, so remember to use the smart scan mode too. Okay, there's a lot to learn here, my goodness. Okay, alright. Estimated time of death, six hours ago. We got his DNA, prints, and blade shape of the knife. Matching data pattern. Oh, we can like drag this around on other knives to see if it matches the knife that we're looking for. Yeah, that's how it works. Carl's bio. And this is gonna match because we're analyzing the guy that the sample came from. 
Oh wow, this is uh, this is pretty hands-on. Huh, I like it. I like it. Can I do anything about the photo though? Muscle boost? Increases your strength for a limited time. Interact with your target before timer runs out. Or it'll need time to recharge. Well, I don't need it right now. Okay, cool. I already examined him. Gabriel. Yeah? We should talk to the worker. Okay, that's all I need for now. Very well, Agent. Looks pre-collapse, basically a glorified corner lamp. There's a coin slot on the side with a coin stuck in it. I can probably pull it out using some extra strength. Pre-collapse. Something called the collapse. Got the coin. Right, do we want to spend it right now? <laughs> it's an old pre-collapse coin. No one would accept it as payment today. I love how even the descriptions are voiced. Looks pre-collapse, basically a glorified corner lamp. There's a coin slot on the side. I'll hold on to it for now. Okay, we don't want a soda? Fine. A row of personal lockers for the workers here. Not sure which one belongs to Carl. So we can probably ask the worker about that. A row of pers- I just opened the biometric analyzer. He is anxious. Mm. No, well, I don't want to console him first. Hey there, what's your name? I'm Alfred, Carl's friend. Well, we were friends. Now he's gone. Are you doing okay? Do you have somebody to talk to after this? I'll be okay. Please just ask your questions so I can go home. That does sound kind of suspicious. Why don't you tell me about what happened this morning? Okay. I get up early for my morning smoke. I keep my smokes in my locker, so I came in here. I saw Carl lying in the corner. It was still kind of dark, so I thought he'd fallen and hurt himself. I ran over to him. That's when I noticed the blood, and I guess I was kind of in shock, so I tried to stop the bleeding, but then I felt how cold he was. I yelled for help. The guys came running, and then Josef, our foreman, sent someone to go get the police. Okay. When was the last time you saw Carl alive? Late last night, or around midnight. He stayed up with us playing cards, which is unusual. Unusual? How so? Well, it was rare for Carl to stick around in the evenings. He usually went out by himself. Oh. Do you know where he used to go? No idea. He didn't talk much about that. Maybe he went to the canteen to meet some friends. Anyway, Carl seemed a bit anxious last night. He seemed distracted. Got it. Thanks for the info. He was already weird last night. Hey, do you know which one of these lockers belongs to Carl? Uh, yeah, it's number two, uh, second from the left. Okay, I'll check it out. Is there an extra key for it somewhere? I don't think so. Uh, as far as I know, Carl had the only one. Well, I have extra strength. Can we ask about the items? Have a look at this picture. Do you know who the woman is? Uh, yeah, that's just some old girlfriend of Carl's from ages ago. Is that so? It doesn't look that oh. old. At least Carl looks about the same. Guess the guy aged well. Any other questions? I locked onto an anomaly just now. Yeah, he was definitely lying about the girl, right? If she's a girlfriend from long ago, why would he be holding onto it now? Let's be a little bit stern. You're lying to my face. If this attitude of yours doesn't change, the gloves will come off. I'm a patient woman, but I will only accept your full cooperation. I'll do what I need to do to bring justice to a murder victim. I'm, I'm sorry. I gave him a promise. The lady in the photo, Carl is still seeing her. Well, was, I suppose. Why wouldn't you tell me that from the beginning? It was a secret. Carl said they would both get in trouble if anybody knew. Why would they get into trouble? An affair? I didn't ask, but yeah, it could be. All right. Tell me everything you know about this woman. Carl said she lived somewhere north of town, but that's all I know. Okay, I believe you. 
Yeah, when people lie, there's a reason for it, but it's not always because they're the murderer. So fine, I believe you. Can you tell me a little bit about Carl? Sure. I've known him since I started working here four years ago. We instantly hit it off. He, he had a great sense of humor. He used to be so cheerful, you know? Always kidding around, always with a smile on his face. But then about a year ago, something happened. He became absent-minded and humorless. I know people can change, but this came seemingly from nowhere. Huh. What do you think caused the shift? I'm not sure, but maybe something to do with his secret relationship? Perhaps all that secrecy started to take its toll on him. One year ago. What's your opinion on the policeman over there? Gabriel is a good man. He's been a cop in Nordzun for quite a while. Okay. Can we ask about the coin? I don't want to share that with him. No, that's private. <laughs> I won't show that to just anyone. Is that like her boyfriend, maybe? You want to see my gun? You want to keep lying when you see my gun? No reason to show him my sidearm. All right. That's enough questions for now. Okay. So it's really good that we had the biometric scanner on because we detected the anomaly. Okay. Gabriel. Yeah? This guy's relaxed. What can you tell me about yourself? Not much to tell. I grew up here in Nordson, and all my family is here. The commissary is my uncle. He's always been the one who encouraged me to become a policeman. So, how long have you been a cop? Eight years now. Wow, eight? Must have started young. Yep, started as a trainee at age 16. Hmm, I see. Do you know anything about a woman who was seeing Carl? I'm afraid not. I didn't know Carl myself. Can I show you the picture anyway? Do you know who the woman in this photo is? Too hard to tell. Sorry. I don't need to know his opinion on that. Why not? It's an ancient coin. Show it to him. Okay, that's all I need for now. Very well, Agent. Okay, well, we have some information here, but is it enough to go off of? We can check out other places. Not yet. I think there's more to find oh. in that locker. I completely forgot about the locker. The second one from the left. Locked. Doesn't look incredibly strong, though. I might be able to get it open with enough force. Uh, Jeez, try not to wreck the place. <laughs> no reason for alarm. I just needed to get this locker open. Okay, something came out. Oh, that's just a little scrap. There was a piece of paper in one of the inner pockets. The note looks like it was written by a woman. It reads, Hi, Doofus. You're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsund? Kisses. Ooh, does she work here? A pair of large boots with dirt under them. Can we analyze it for prints? Yeah? Soil contains traces of rare flora. Saffron. I could go and follow up on the saffron lead now, but I should check out the dormitory first. Cool. And they don't tell you to do this. You just have to like sort of know to do it yourself. Oh, well, we know that's um, Carl's blood, right? Postmortem, huh? That would suggest that he likely only touched the body after death. So he's not lying then. It's Carl's? Okay, he didn't lie about that part. Fine. Any prints on the machine here? Oh, dude, I am loving this already. This is amazing. Ask about the note? If the lady works here, maybe he knows. A few more questions, if I may. Do you know anything about saffron plants? Nope. I know we grow them in Nordson, but that's it. Do you know who wrote this note to Carl? Afraid not. I don't recognize the handwriting. All right, fair enough. That's enough questions for- Okay. Oh, sorry. Gabriel, 
Yeah. Do you know anything about saffron plants? I know we grow them here in Nordsund, but I'm not sure exactly where. We have vegetables all over. It's apparently rare, though. I found this in Carl's coat. What do you make of it? Not sure. But it's a bit strange that the person who wrote this couldn't just tell him face to face. Maybe they didn't want to risk being seen together. Or the note's author needed to leave in a hurry. Yeah, could be. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that's all I need for now. Very well, Agent. Is that all we got here? Pretty much. The coat? Can we analyze the coat? Don't think so. We got the note from the coat and that's it. I've looked there already. All right, let's go to the dorms. Hey, I'm gonna go check out the dorm. Where's Carl's bed? Turn left and then go straight. I left the light on so it'd be easy for you to find. Gotcha, be right back. A lot of things here. Dirty laundry. Smells like machine oil. Nothing else in there. Both beds look recently used. Well, he was alive up until very recently. Huh. Odd place for a ventilation duct. Can we break it? I don't think extra strength helps that. <laughs> We're not gonna break things here? Fine. Pens and paper. Nothing out of the ordinary. Clean clothes and sheets. Nothing interesting. We gotta be able to scan some of this. No, no fingerprints and like other things like that. Oh, I have to switch the scanner to Carl's bio. And we find out that this is Carl's bed? What about the prints on the bag? Oh, fingerprints. Oh? Huh. There are a lot of prints around a panel on the air duct. Why? This is his... dorm. He's touching everything around here. Makes sense. But the vent is a little bit strange, isn't it? Any boot prints? We don't see any. The panel is screwed on tight. I'll need some way of getting it loose. Is there like a screw? Can I use a coin on it? Bingo. There was a small key hidden inside the duct. I think I'm almost done here. I should just talk to Gabriel before I go. Yeah, we don't need to ask about it, because we are smart. A small, unique-looking key. The chest? Nope. That lock is way larger than this key. The desk. I don't see any keyholes on this desk. Okay. There's no keyholes in the bag. <laughs> I don't see how those things work together. Me neither. Let's go. Hey, I think I'm done here. Oh, okay. Mind sharing your findings? It seems like the murder could be tied to a secret relationship Carl had with a woman. But I'm leaving all options open. Sounds reasonable. Do you have a lead to follow up on? Yes. I have reason to believe that Carl recently passed through an area with saffron plants somewhere in Nordsund. Maybe I can correlate that with Carl's movements to the north of town when seeing that woman. Good. Meanwhile, we'll transport the body to the morgue and have an autopsy performed as soon as possible. Do you want us to keep the area sealed off? No need. I'm done here and won't come back. You can let the men get back to work. Very well. I'll let them know. By the way, how do I get to the police station from here? 
Just head straight east outside. You'll see it. Got it. See you later. I'm not a local, am I? I don't seem to know very much about this place. Yeah. All right. Wow. Elevator. West? We can go west? We'll just talk to the people around here? Hey, what's happening here? Bit of an electrical problem with some fallen power lines. It's being taken care of, but it'll be a while. So I can't enter the museum? Well, you can, but only if electrocution is something you enjoy during working hours. Very funny. Hmm. Yeah, we can joke around a little bit. Electrocution, that's funny. <laughs> so when can you have this fixed? You can enter the premises by tomorrow morning, okay? All right then, carry on. The way she said it made it sound like she didn't really think it was funny. <laughs> Hello, deputy. What are you guarding? The residence of the first murder victim. The commissary told me to direct you to his office before going upstairs. I see. I'll go find him and come back later then. Sounds good, agent. First murder victim? We can't go in, can we? Everyone's relaxed around here? All right. Looks like an old hovercraft. I don't need to go down to the ground right now. Ah, oh, we're sort of in the sky. Town Square or West? All right, so this is the Town Square. That building with the emblem must be the police station. Wanna go there right away? Nice and shiny. I can even see my reflection in it. Looks like a small wind turbine for electricity. Hmm. All right. I'm surprised the Bureau got their thumb out of their ass. It's not like they could find Nordson on a map. I, for one, am grateful for their help. From what I hear, the person they sent is young, but quite capable. Optimistic as always, eh, Kurt? I guess we'll see. Yeah, I'm not a local. Ah, uh, Agent Anglin. We've been expecting you. Councilwoman, I was told you'd be my Bureau contact here. That's correct. I'm Stina Ruth. And this here is Kurt Anderson, police commissary. Welcome, Agent. Enjoy your trip to the middle of nowhere? It was a bit bumpy, and way longer than I expected. Yeah, the train has seen better days. You'll find your luggage in your quarters, just through the door behind me. Thanks. I'll check it out later. So, you were probably confused as hell when we sent you straight to a crime scene, right? Kind of. I thought I was supposed to investigate a murder from last week. You were. But unfortunately, a second killing required your urgent attention. I assume there are some bureau procedures before I brief Agent England about the situation? Yes. Why don't you head to your office, and I'll send this youngling on her merry way when we're done. Very well. It was a pleasure to meet you, Agent. Likewise. I'm a bit confused here. Who do I report to? Only to me, as overseer of this district. The local police are at your disposal, since they're legally required to aid you in the investigation. Got it. How would you like me to share my findings with you? Face to face, in the evenings. The balcony inside the local canteen is a good place to meet. Okay. I think I have what I need, then. I'll go talk to the commissary. Good. We'll catch up later. Oh, but I have to ask. Tell me, how was it for you? What do you mean? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. We've both done it. Oh, you mean my... You mean the augmentation, the nanofluid injection. Sticking to the boring scientific terms, are we? Back in my time, we used to just call it taking the blue. Come on, let this old lady live a little. Tell me, how was your first kiss with the blue? Mmm. Hmm. All of them are positive. 
A sense of enlightenment and acute awareness washed over me. A crystal clear lucidity I had never felt before. <laughs> I remember that moment like it was yesterday. What I wouldn't give to feel like that again. No side effects, I hope. We wouldn't want you to get compromised in dangerous situations. Not yet, but I know what to look out for. Mild hallucinations, nightmares, burning sensations in the limbs, the occasional migraine. Things like that. Yeah, that covers the usual suspects. All right, I think you're good to go then. We shouldn't keep the commissary waiting. All right. Two people who both have augmentations, but she prefers to meet face to face. Stina, Ruth. Still like my coffee. <sighs> ah, damn good coffee. <laughs> A thermos, presumably filled with coffee. It's a map of Nordsund. Looks like the center of the disc is hollow. Curious. Low maintenance. My kind of plant. Hmm. By the way, the voice acting in this game was directed by Dave Gilbert of Wajid Eye Games. This actress who does Vera, if I remember right. Nah, I have work to do. She has some smaller roles in Unavowed. So you might be getting some similar vibes to Unavowed here. Oh? Unmanned. Makes sense with no people in here. There's nobody here, right? Probably for opening the cells. I don't need to mess with that. Empty. Probably for opening the cells. I don't need to mess with that. Okay. Yeah. Empty. All right. Did I look at this already? It's a map of Nordsund. Yes. The center is empty. Vera's quarters. Anderson's office. It's gonna be a long investigation, huh? Cause I'll be staying here for a while. Looks purely decorative. There's the bottle of molding resin here. Might be useful. Hmm. Doesn't appear to be functional. There's not even a switch or anything. Then why do we have it? Nice big lemon. Small miracle to see it grow to that size under these conditions. No, I'm not tired. Maybe later. I'm not that hungry. No, I'm not... Yeah, there's not too much going on here for now. Can I check the triangle, by the way? Ah, so right now I have a slight leaning towards empathetic. Slight leaning, very slight leaning. Alright, Agent. Would you like me to brief you about the first murder? Yes, please. Maya Strand, 41 years old. The caretaker of the Nordson Museum. She was found by the janitor on the floor near the exhibits early last Wednesday. Just like Carl, she was stabbed. No witnesses, no evidence. Killer practically a ghost. No signs of a forced entry. So either the entrance was open or she let him in herself. What about her residence? Anything out of the ordinary in there? Nothing, as far as we could tell. But we left the place as we found it, if you want to have a look. She lived upstairs from the museum. Noted. The crime scene is no longer intact, though, correct? Afraid so. The museum is important to Nordson, so we had the place cleaned out pretty quickly. Hmm. That's not good. Exactly what kind of power does Town Hall have over the Nordson police? Well, there's the elected mayor, Marianne Holst, and the town council with five members. Technically, they can't interfere with our work, but they do allocate resources to the police department. So I try to appease them where I can. So they can't fire you if they disagree with your methods? No, I'm independently elected. But they certainly have ways of making my life a living hell if they really want to. Got it. Thanks for the info. One more thing. I'd like to see Maya's body, if that's possible. Of course. 
We brought it out of the freezer this morning. You'll find it in the morgue over at the clinic. Dr. Pearson, our physician, is awaiting your arrival. Good. I'll head there when we're done. Both the murders seem to be done by people who know the victims. That's all I needed. Very well. Or at least for some reason, they're not really offering resistance. Looks like a logbook. Maybe Anderson records his daily work there. Just lots of case files. The window offers a view over a street that connects to the town square. A collection of what seems to be both fiction and books on law and social sciences. If that's all Anderson's, he's quite well read. I guess Anderson has a colleague. Who's not in? A small local greenhouse. A typical site in Nordson, it seems. Okay. Well, we gotta go see the body before we do anything, huh? Maybe we can start matching DNA or the, the blade shape and things like that. The physician is waiting for me at the clinic. Hi there. Hello. Thought I'd introduce myself, since I'll be coming here a lot. I'm Agent England, Central Bureau. Oh, nice to meet you. It's a relief to have you here. We're all shook by these recent killings. Sure, the doctor's excited, but even his morbid curiosity has limits, you know. After all, we mostly treat coughs and the occasional broken limb here. I get it. I'll do my best to help. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to go to the morgue. Where's that? Down the stairs on your left. Great, thanks. I'm guessing those contain patient files and such. It's a map of the clinic layout. There are like random vines crawling in this clinic. Healthy looking plant. No, don't go there just yet. An old freight elevator of some kind. Likely out of order. Okay. Wow, he sounds way too cheerful. Don't worry, Maya. You'll be put to rest soon. I know, I know. Sorry about the delay. I was needed urgently out of town. Oh, hello there. Me and this old gal have been expecting you. <laughs> Talkative, is she? Oh, no doubt. The dead have a lot to say, you know. Sometimes more so than the living. Is that so? The living are fickle and prone to deceit. Once dead, we can't hide things anymore. Not from me, at least. I do want to believe that most people are sincere, but is that true? I want to believe so. I'm sorry you feel that way. I think most men and women out there are sincere. Oh, sure. Perhaps I came across as a bit misanthropic. Most of the time, people are just fine. Glad to hear that. Now, I'd like to ask some questions. Sure, go right ahead. What can you tell me about yourself, Doctor? Oh, me? I suppose I would qualify as a workaholic. Most of my time is spent here. So how long have you been practicing medicine? Hmm, must be 16 years now, I believe. Damn. Huh. And you're the only doctor in Nordsund? Yes, but we have good relations with the other settlements. We collaborate and pool resources when necessary. He's a doctor. He's not a, what do you call it? The person who does the, um, the forensic stuff for corpses. Did you know Maya Strand? Not really, but I enjoyed listening to the occasional lecture of hers at the museum. She had quite an intellect, that woman. So she wasn't a patient of yours? Oh, she was, but that's all confidential, so I can't say much about it. I understand, but anything you can share would help. Hmm, well, during the autopsy, I noticed that she was unusually worn and feeble for her age. Okay, and what does that tell us? For one thing, that she would have needed help with the more physically demanding tasks of the museum. 
Got it. Thanks. What do you think of Stina Ruth, the councilwoman? She can be quite an unpleasant woman. I can't say I've enjoyed my few interactions with her. I guess we gotta ask about everybody, because we suspect everyone. What do you think of Commissary Anderson? I think he does a fine job. He's been instrumental in making sure that I can work under such good conditions. Yeah, this place is surprisingly well equipped. Definitely on par with our facilities in the city. I come from the big city. This place is like a small town. I'm looking for a young woman connected to the second victim, Carl. I can't help with that. I didn't know Carl on a personal level. Yeah, but we gotta cross it off anyway. What do you think of Gabriel? Mm, your average policeman. I have no strong opinion about him one way or the other. Did you know Carl Oscarson? No. When I heard he was murdered, I didn't even recognize his name. I had to check my records to realize that I've treated him. To be fair, I've had many patients. But he must have been cursed with one of those awfully forgettable faces. All right. Anything out of the ordinary in his medical history? Sorry. Can't go into detail. Doctor-patient confidentiality, you know? Keep it vague, then. Well, okay. Let me put it this way. I doubt you'd learn much from his file. Noted. Thanks. So he's quite a normal person? What are your conclusions about Maya's murder? Most obvious first. The cause of death is acute blood loss due to the multiple stab wounds to the chest and stomach, two of which were lethal. The murder weapon is a mid-sized blade, likely a knife of some kind. There are some defense wounds on her arms, so the victim likely tried to shield herself against her assailant. I couldn't recover any biological traces of the murderer. There's no blood on her that isn't hers, or any traces of skin under her nails. This makes me suspect that the killer likely wore protective clothing and gloves. The time of death was roughly 2,300 hours last Tuesday, five days ago today. If we're thinking about things like AI, what if there's no DNA because the murderer is a robot? <laughs> Do you know where saffron is grown in Nordson? Uh, I'm afraid not. We have plants all over, but botany is not my area of expertise. Any theories on Carl's murder? Not yet. I'll need to see the body first. Fair enough. Do you know what this opens? Not a clue, but it looks like a one-of-a-kind key. Ever use something like this? I haven't, no. Molding resin. Could we make a fake key? What do you make of this? The handwriting looks feminine, but I'm not sure what to make of the contents. What does that even mean? Handwriting being feminine? Pretty vague. Do you recognize this couple? The man is clearly the second victim, Carl. As for the woman, it's too hard to tell given the damage to the photo. Okay, okay, fair enough. That's enough questions for now. Okie dokie. Oh, one last thing. I've been told that the second body is on its way here. If you come back later today, I should be able to tell you something about it. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Can we do some of our own forensics here? Deceased female, 43-ish. Estimated time of death five days ago. Added DNA and fingerprints to data vault. I suppose that's all we can do. Wonder about this knife here, though. Blade shape? No? It's a scalpel? Huh. Appears to be a small crematory. I suppose that's where the doctor writes down his autopsy reports. Did we ever look at this? A bottle of molding resin. I can use this to cast different shapes. It might also work as a glue. Hmm. This might be useful. You're just gonna take it? I'll wash my hands when I go to bed. Plenty of time still to get my hands dirty. All right. Oh. One, oh. one last waiting room before the final embrace with the earth. I think that's for collecting the ashes after a cremation. They have a crematorium right here in the morgue. Wow. 
Okay. Well, uh, as much as I would love to continue, I feel like this is a pretty good place to stop for a first look here. We got to look at a murder mystery, and there's two victims who seem to have been killed similarly. Maybe killed by somebody they know, and they were both killed with a knife. And so far, no DNA clues, nothing. Except for the mysterious woman that the second victim is connected with. It's a little bit too early to see how the story can deviate depending on what personality choices I make, what forensic tools I make use of, and what augmentations I end up getting. But so far, it seems really cool. If you'd like to find out what happens next, consider checking out the game yourself. All right, this was Wellens with a first look of Whispers of a Machine, and thanks for watching. I will see you all later.